Hello everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about how to make a pitch deck on PowerPoint. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So creating a pitch deck is essential for raising money. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking it down for you, how you can really use PowerPoint to make it happen and how to do it in a way that is super powerful. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the fastest track to start a pitch deck on PowerPoint is to not start from scratch. So use a template. You can actually use the template below that entrepreneurs are using all over the world to raise millions that has the proper flow and the proper structure. That way you don't have to start from scratch. But remember that ultimately it's all about understanding what is going to be the format, what is going to be the structure, the flow, what typically investors they expect to see on every single one of those slides. And that's why when you're using a template, it also acts as a nice guide and as a nice roadmap that you just replace with your own content and with stuff. And again, with that structure and that flow that people are going to want to see. So again, don't start from scratch. Start with something, let's say with a template. So there's different methods to create a pitch stick. You can either use a freelancer, you can use an agency or an advisory firm, you can do it yourself, or perhaps you can use just consultants or in-house. So let's go one by one. So freelancers, you can use websites like, for example, Upwork, where essentially most of the stuff is going to be around per, perhaps the design as well as the copywriting. Those are the type of expertise that you may want to bring. And here, you know, the type of expense that you're going to be looking at is anywhere between 1000 to perhaps 5000 Now, if you go to, let's say, an agency, it's going to be much more expensive. Here, they're going to be bringing different types of teams that are coming in together. And also, especially if you do advisory firms and other uh, consultancies, they may be charging you all the way up to $50,000, but that price range is all over the place. You can also do it yourself. Now, the thing about doing it yourself is that it may take a little bit more time. You may be making some mistakes and you're going to go to market that you don't really know if it's going to stick or not. Now, on the other end, you can also use perhaps consultants, people that can help you, that maybe have the background operational expertise, that have been in your same market, and that perhaps bring that insight to actually create something that is going to address head on some of the investor concerns when they're reviewing your pitch deck. Because typically, on average, an investor is only going to spend two minutes and 41 seconds per presentation. So creating a pitch deck is going to be part, a key part of the sales process. And in order to get to the next meeting, because your goal is always to get to the next meeting, because getting to the next meeting allows you to address more concerns. The more concerns that you address, the closer that you are to the money. And obviously when there is no concerns, money is in the bank. So some of the critical factors that the pitch deck needs to do in order for you to spark and really get that interest that is going to allow you to secure the next meeting is going to be the following. Help you stand out from the crowd. Spike interest from the potential investor. Convey credibility and capability. Drive and facilitate action. So what makes a good pitch stick? A good pitch stick really is all about having clarity on the vision, on where you are today and where you want to be. Now, in order to do that, you also need to have a great team and the team needs to present itself in a way where the investor is going to know that you are the right team on the right seats and that they need to bet on you. Because remember that those investors are ultimately speaking with your competitors. They have done the research on the market and they have a clear idea on why they want to invest and what is separating them from making the investment. So by having the right team with the right expertise and skill sets is going to allow them to understand that it's going to be okay to place a bet. Now, the other thing that you want to do and that you want to convey on your pitch deck is that it showcases that the market is big enough. Because remember that typically the investors, especially the ones that are institutional investors like venture capital firms, they're going to, they're going to want 
to invest in companies that have the potential of a 10x return. That means that if you are getting money in at a $20 million valuation from these investors, the company needs to be acquired for at least $200 million for them to justify the risk of having placed a bet on your business. So again, clarity, team, and market is going to be a magical combination in order to spark the interest from those investors. A great presentation needs to have also a great structure. And when it comes to the structure for a pitch deck, it should be the following. The cover, the problem, the solution, market size, the product, traction, team slide, advisors and board members, competition analysis, financials, the ask, and the thank you slide. Another critical piece of this is to get your content together. Now, when it comes to content, some of the things that you want to keep in mind are the following. The logo, contact information, co-founder resumes and bios, charts and graphs, pictures and images, financial projections, the text. So, Getting started with PowerPoint is going to be the first step. Now, obviously, PowerPoint is part of Microsoft. You're going to need to get your account. You're going to have to perhaps use a PC or even you can, get, you can get it for Mac as well. But again, you need to have the license in place so that you can operate PowerPoint. Now, another way of really getting started could be using Google Slides, which is on the web where you can collaborate with other team members because PowerPoint, it probably lacks the component of collaborating with others. So if you need to collaborate with others, you can always create the document on Google Slides, collaborate with your team, and then you can download into PowerPoint and then work from there. When creating the deck on PowerPoint, you want to start with naming the document. This is going to allow as well to really be able to put the document on autosave in case you want to click out of it and you want to actually get back to it later on. Also, you want to name it because this, this is going to perhaps label the file that is going to be sent and the way that it's going to be perceived by others when they see it, rather than having just a blank file. So it is essential that you label it right away. Then once you've labeled it, perhaps with the name of your company, you want to pick the theme for your slides. Now, if you're starting it from scratch, there's themes in there that you can use. But my personal recommendation is that you th use themes that are good for the eye. Try to stay away from dark and too bright colors. Try to stay in the middle and go with colors that are going to be okay and that are not going to be too sparkly or stuff like that, that perhaps is going to invite the investor to click out of it. So use maybe white, blue, uh, and, and, and really colors that are just normal uh, and that are not too much on the edge when it comes to dark or to bright. Then you want to go with choosing the font size. Now, you don't want to go too small and you don't want to go too big. You, you don't want to go too big because then it's going to take too much real estate and you don't want to go too small because essentially if you go too small, some people are not going to be able to read it because remember that many of the people that are going to be reviewing those presentations are going to be a little bit more advanced in age and perhaps they, they have lost some of their eyesight. So probably keep it to 30 points. That's the type of size that is universal when it comes to creating pitch decks. Then you want to add text and images. The images, you want to make sure that they represent very well your brand, your tone, uh, the design and goes in parallel and has that consistency with the way that you're packaging your company or your service, you know, offline. Uh, and again, what you want to do here is you want to have that nice balance between text and images because as I always say, investors, they tend to skim through those presentations. They're not literally spending the time investing themselves into reviewing, reading. They just go like right away, one after the other. So that's why you need to make it easier for them. Don't make them work harder. Just have that nice balance between the text and then also the visuals. The good thing as well about PowerPoint is that you can add your notes when it comes to the narrative because one thing is the pitch deck, but the other thing is how you're going to be delivering the pitch on all those different slides. 
Typically, the pitch, the narrative is going to be anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. You could be spending between one to one and a half minute per slide. But again, what you want to do here is PowerPoint allows you to put some comments on whatever the narrative that you're giving per slide uh, under each one of those slides. So perhaps, you know, in the comment section, you want to exactly put in there what you're going to be saying. So that way you remember and you know what kind of narrative goes into each one of those slides. Then you're going to want to review and cut, especially after you've put all the content in, then you want to make sure that the furniture is in the right places of the house. So once you have that solid structure, then start cutting down, simplifying, because simple is better. So try to avoid filler words, try to see if you can perhaps combine certain visuals. And again, the less that you have, the better it's going to be for them to digest the story. Then you should start to get feedback. Feedback from people, perhaps they can put it on the comment section of the, powers, of the PowerPoint on each one of those slides. That way you know on which one of those slides people have comments and what they're suggesting so that you can make some of those changes to the deck. Then you want to upload the pitch deck, the PowerPoint document of the pitch deck, into perhaps a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder where you can just grab that link and share it with those potential investors or with whoever you want to share it. Because the last thing that you want is to really add that PowerPoint into an email because the attachment may be too big and some of those investors may be too picky with you taking over their inbox. So again, hit a like on this video. Also leave a comment and let me know what you're up to and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And if you're raising money, send me an email at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. I would love to help out with your fundraising efforts. Thank you so much for watching.